Hi everyone. Today I'm going to go over a few simple NumPy exercises and concepts about creating arrays from scratch. I'm going to make this video as interactive as possible. So go ahead and download the Python notebook linked in the description below. There's two notebooks. There's an exercise notebook without any code, without any solutions. And there's a solutions notebook with the code all written out. So I think the best way to make this interactive and the best way to learn is to actually watch my video that's in this playlist that where I explain the concepts of creating, you know, NumPy arrays from scratch. So once you watch the video, you can then open up the exercise notebook and try to solve these questions, you know, without watching this video here and without watching or looking at the solutions in the other Python notebook. So if you're having trouble, then watch this video or then go into that solutions notebook to see uh, if you can understand what, what we're doing here, what I'm doing in this video. All right, so when you're ready, go ahead and open the notebook in either Jupyter Notebooks or Google Colabs. In this case, I'm using Google Colabs. So what you're going to find when you open up this notebook is I'm about halfway down. So this is the top and about halfway down, you'll see the section called creating arrays from scratch. All right. So these arrays are NumPy arrays. To, so to get started, what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to add in an extra code block here and I'm going to bring it to the top and I'm going to import the NumPy library. So import NumPy is how you import the library. And then I'm going to alias it with as NP. All right. So anytime we call a function in the NumPy library, we're just going to type in NP. Execute that line of code. It's successful. And on to the first question. The first question being create an integer array with 100 ones. All right. So there's two ways to do this. The first way is, you know, you can manually create a Python list using brackets and then manually type out 100 ones and then convert that into a NumPy array. You know, that's defeats the purpose of coding, I think. So we're not going to do it that way. What we're going to do is use the NumPy function ones and create an array doing that. So we're going to, in order to do that, call the numpy library and then call the ones function. And as soon as I type in ones and then the parentheses, what pops up in Google Colabs at least is basically an explanation of what this function requires in terms of parameters. It requires three parameters or it, it, it will take in three parameters. The first one is shape, which is an, int or sequence of int the shape of the new array so an integer or a sequence of integers so it's the example is parentheses two comma three or two so two comma three is creating an array of ones that with two rows and three columns or if i just type in the value two in this function it's going to create um, a, a, a shape of two or basically just have two ones in that array. Then an optional parameter is D type right here or data type. And so basically what you're going to do is you're going to specify the data type of the number. So you can either have an int or you can have a float and the default is a float. The third parameter is order. We actually don't need to go through this. We're not going to be using the order parameter, but we're going to be using the shape and the D type parameter here. All right. So the first uh, parameter is shape. We know we want 100 ones. So we're just going to type in 100 because that's what the shape is going to be. And now we want the D type. Here it says the default is a float, right? We don't want it to be a float. We want it to be an integer. So let's just say we, we forget to, to explicitly force a data type. What we get is 100 ones of float value. And so we know they're floats because there's a decimal attached to the, to the number. So all we need to do in order to get that data type to be an integer is type out data D type equals and then uh, parentheses. So double or single parentheses is fine. And then type an int int. 
you should see that text be read and that's how you know you're doing it right. So if you type this out, it forces the array, it forces a number to be an integer. And so that's what we get. We get a hundred ones that are integers and you know it's an integer because there's no decimal attached to the number. So another, another question that's very similar is create a four by three float array with zeros. So instead of using this once function, what we're gonna actually use is the zeros function, np zeros. Oops, sorry. np zeros, it also takes the same, same um, number of parameters, the shape, the D type, and the order. In this case, we want a four by three. So we're gonna just have, we're just gonna type in parentheses four rows, comma three, columns and the d type is by default a float so we don't actually need to worry about that and that's actually what we get we get four rows three columns with zeros that are of data type float All right and so another similar very similar question is create a five by two array filled with the value 6.28 so we're not going to use the ones we're not going to use the zeros function we're going to use this function called full and to use full you have the shape parameter, you have the fill value parameter, and then you have the D type and you have the order parameter. We're actually going to be using the shape, a five by two, and the fill value. We're gonna, we're gonna specify the fill value as 6.28. And then it doesn't, it doesn't say what the, what the data type needs to be, but we know because there's a decimal here that it needs to be float. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna type the shape was is five comma two, and then we're gonna specify the fill value, which is six point two eight. And I'm just gonna run this to make sure it works. Right here, we have a five by two array with a fill value of a six point two eight, right? And we know it's a float just by the way these numbers look. All right, let's so let's move on to something a little bit more complicated. Create an array filled with a linear sequence starting at zero, ending at 30, stepping by three. It kind of, if you read this bottom line, um, it kind of tells you what the function we're gonna use. We're gonna use the numpy a range function. And it, of course it gives us the parameters we need, the start and the stop and the step here. So, what this question is asking is, uh, what we want is the start, the ending at 30 and stepping by three. So there's multiple ways to interpret this. Um, it's not super clear the way it's written. Do we want it to actually ha display 30 or do we want it to stop at 30 and not have 30 actually be a number that's output put it um, or displayed so there's actually I'm just gonna do it in three in two ways the first way is I'm gonna just take it at face value and type in 0 30 as the stop value and the the step value of 3 and what I'm gonna get is an array that is stepping through all the way to 30 but excluding 30 not including 30. And this is what that this line, the sentence says. The first parameter zero is inclusive. It's always gonna start and include the the number you type in at the at the start parameter. And the second parameter is exclusive. So 30 is not gonna be displayed. It's just gonna go up to 30 but not display it. And then obviously the the step parameter just tells you like how how it's going to step through uh, the number. So it's like every third number is gonna be displayed. So obviously this is correct the way this question is phrased, but say that I actually want it to end at 30 and I want 30 to be displayed. What would I type in this, this stop parameter? I would type in 33 because that way I know 30 will actually be included into uh, the array. All right, so there's several ways to actually do this. 
um, depending on how clear you are with the with the question. Let's move on to the next question. Create, create an array of nine evenly spaced values between zero to 64 inclusive. So this, this question's a little bit cl more clear than the, the last question. We know we want zero and 64 to be in uh, the array and we want nine evenly spaced values. Well, there's a function that does exactly that. It's called linspace. So if I type np.linspace, I then get the parameters needed, start, stop, and number, and then a bunch of other parameters. All I really want uh, in there is the start, the stop, and the number of values that I want in my array. So it's really just to get rid of the pop-up and expose the question again. I'm gonna be typing in 0, 64, and then nine, right? Start at zero, end at 64, and um, spit out nine evenly spaced values. And that's what I get. All right, so now let's go to the next question. Create a five by two array of uniformly distributed random values between zero and one. So a very specific request, very specific question. We're actually gonna use the random.random .random function, which will exactly give me that. It will give me random values between zero and one that are uniformly distributed. Random.random. .random. And all it says is all I need to put in is the size. The size is a five by two array. So it's five comma two. And make sure you have the parentheses there. And that's what I get. Let's move on quickly to the last two questions. Create an array of 10 random integers in the interval of zero and five. You see how this these are brackets here? Typically, the, these brackets mean um, inclusive. So if I write zero comma five, it means that I want in my array the value zero and I also want in my array the value five. If I have parentheses like this or I write it like this, it typically means that I want to have uh, an array that has the value zero but excludes the value five. So it would actually just go up to four, but exclude five. And that's what the parentheses mean. The parentheses mean exclude, while this bracket means include. So what I want to create an, uh, do is create an array of 10 random integers in the intervals of zero to five and including um, the five. So I'm going to use the numpy random.randint function. It's basically the low and the high is what I want to add. Um, and then also the size, which is how many, you know, how many elements I want in my array. So the low and the high. And so the, the low is going to be a zero. The high, it says include uh, the, the value five. So the high is actually going to be a six because the way it works with Python is Typically, the, the high or the stop value is by default excluding the value. So it, it's going to go up to six, but not actually include six in the array. It's just going to include up to five. So if we want to be zero to five inclusive, we're actually going to be typing in the value six. And then we want 10 random integers. So that's what the shape is going to look like. And that's what we get. We get the, the zeros and we get all the numbers in between zero and five, right? Just, just to confirm it, if I type in five here, I'm not gonna get any fives in my array. I'm just gonna get zero to four, right? And so that's not what we want. We want to make sure we include five, so we have to type in six. So the last question is, Create a four by four identity matrix. And if you don't remember what identity matrices are, it's a linear algebra concept where you have a bunch of ones in diagonal from the top left going down to the bottom right. Um, so I'll create one and I'll show you uh, what it looks like in case you don't remember. But what we're gonna use is the I function and we're gonna type in four which is uh, the N here, which is an integer and stands for the number of rows in the output. And we want 
you know, four by four matri matrix. So it's going to be four. And that's what your identity matrix looks like. It's just ones in diagonal from left to right. All right. So I think that covers all of the questions. And so that's it for creating NumPy arrays from scratch. Thank you.